Hello. Today we're going to keep talking about rendering variants. This time let's talk about placeholders. Um, so in my promos I've got three promos in here. Two of them using extended default variant and one of them is using a default rendering variant. I want to extend my extended uh, variant uh, with a placeholder that will render a place that will allow my authors to drop a component uh, between the text and the link. So I will go to my site presentation rendering variants and promo find my variant find where I want to put it underneath the promo text and I will insert a placeholder here. So I'm just going to drop it. Since I said that I want it underneath my text, I'm going to put it as the last. Let's see how the variant has changed, how the component has morphed. Now my promos have um, a rendering uh, a placeholder rendered uh, inside of them and you can see that it has promo 1 2 key and promo 1 3 what does it mean is that this is the first placeholder in the second promo and first placeholder in the third promo this one is apparently number 1 uh, and uh, I can uh, and I can uh, leave it at that. I can drop an image into my component. Let's pick an image that I have prepared ahead. And you can see that uh, you can drop uh, additional um, additional components uh, in there just like you would in your uh, page splitters or out of the box um, out of the box uh, placeholders. Um, so that would be just a regular component where you want to drop uh, a placeholder uh, in here but let's talk about a slightly more advanced scenario. Let's save that page and let's go to my blog and in my blog I have a bunch of posts and I have a page. So what is the common scenario for um, blogs is that they will render next uh, in the list of posts they will render something like tags. So I want to be able to render tags uh, in those um, in those uh, uh, in this list. So let me go to let me first check which rendering variant I'm using here and let me just check blog posts. Uh, nothing's changed because right now it is just a standard rendering variant. Let's go to my page list blog posts and see what we're doing here. Okay, we have a section and we have a title uh, as you can see in here. So I want to render my tags underneath the the title. So I will add a placeholder here. And there you go. I can go back to the blog, refresh my page. And actually, I wanted to render it below the title. So I'm going to move it to the second position, refresh again, and I'm rendering in that order the title, then the placeholder. Now, there is one thing that you need to pay attention to. It's actually a page list, 1-1. It's the first page list and the first placeholder. But if you look at that, it, this has exactly the same key. So what's going on here? We're rendering it with the same key. Uh, this is not uh, by mistake. This is because of a neat trick like how Sidecore behaves. So from my taxonomy I will drop a tag list to my first placeholder. 
and I will save that. And Sidecar will automatically multiply it to every place, multiply that component to every placeholder. But wait, those pages are all tagged the same? They're probably not. So what happened? This component, because it's dropped on this page, um, it is actually treating this page as the data source. So we don't want to render the tags from this page. Instead, we want to render the tags from the pages that are being listed. For that, you can check the switch component context to the currently rendered item. So for every component, that component that I drop in the placeholder is going to think that it is being rendered in uh, in the post 2, post 3, post 4, and we'll use that as the data source. So I'm going to switch, turn that switch off, save it, and refresh. And there you go. You can actually see that this post 1, let's navigate to post 1 page, Post one head management, and indeed it is management. The post two has technical front end, and when we go to the blog, indeed post two has technical and front end in here. So that's pretty cool. I can render the text, I can render the, I could even uh, let go of this page field and simply take the title component from here and I could drop it in my page list. Save that and it will get multiplied on each of my on each of my uh, element on the list. Well that doesn't look very nice. Let's delete that. And we're back to square one. Now, I've added this text component and I've added the title, but a lot of the components don't really make sense in that placeholder. So I want to limit uh, the placeholder um, to only be able to accept my tag list component. Um, so for this, I would need to create a, a placeholder restrictions uh, in my within my site but if i did it for page list one i would limit every page list um, uh, on my site to only accept uh, tags component to not do that i'm going to actually say that my placeholder key should be blog posts or blog for short Let's go back to my blog. Let's refresh that page and let's see how is the placeholder named. We have blog 1-1. That's great. Now let's create a placeholder restrictions for that blog. Now that I have the uh, blog named, I want to define the placeholder restrictions. So I'm going to add a placeholder restriction definition. I will call it blog. And since we have the one, the blog dash one dash one, uh, well, that blog will just don't won't catch it. We need to wildcard it at the end. And I'm going to allow only the rendering that. I want to my authors to drop here. So I want only tag list to be allowed there. I'm going to save that, go back to my page, refresh, and now you can see that the only component here is a tag list. Now what happens if I will try to drag a different component? Well the experience editor will tell me that this component is not allowed here, but let's try tag list. That is fine. 
So that's fantastic. I can actually I can actually display my tags and I can actually limit that only this component can uh, can be uh, dropped on my tag list. Now that's not very nice. I've got a page next to my posts, but for that page I don't want to display this tag list. I want to hide it. So what I can do for that is I can use the rendering variant rules. So on my tags placeholder I want to create a rule and I want to limit it by template. So where the item is of specific template or inherits. Well, let's pick inherit to be uh, to be safe if we ever inherited from blog post to have some elaborate blog post. I want this inheritance to be taken care of. So I'm going to go to my project and it's going to be tenant and it needs to inherit from the blog post. Okay, so now the placeholder should only render if my pages are inheriting from a blog post and not for regular pages. Let's refresh that. And there you go. We have no problem with the tag list. That wouldn't render for the visitors, but uh, you know, I don't want people to see it even in, I uh, don't want my editors to see it even in uh, during the editing mode. So that is the placeholder uh, variant and the placeholder definition where you can specify the rules and the placeholder key. Hope you, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Till next time.